ClickChamp is a video editing platform that provides you tools to create impactful professional grade videos faster than with traditional tools. One method is by using ready-made templates to get you going right away. ClipChamp is not an oversimplified storyboard that limits your creative freedom. You edit using a full timeline-based editing model that breaks out video, audio, and text into separate tracks for complete control of the editing process. You have the flexibility to create any video a personal creator or business may need from social media ads, long-form video content, customer testimonials, product demos, and more. Over 17 million registered customers worldwide use ClipChamp to deliver their creative works. I would like to thank ClipChamp for sponsoring this video, which will help me guide you through the process of creating a video from scratch using some of the tools available in ClipChamp, all on your Chromebook. Also, wait till the end of the video to get a coupon code for one month free access to ClipChamp's business platinum tier. So let's start by installing ClipChamp. To install ClipChamp, open up the Play Store on your Chromebook. Search for ClipChamp and click install on this search result. I'll also provide a direct link in the description. ClipChamp will then be on your app launcher, so run it from there. Then log in using your preferred method. On this screen, you can create videos using some templates, but I'm going to create a video from scratch, so I'll click on the create a video button on the top right. So here I have the new project I created. The first thing I want to do is give it a name. This video is going to be about upgrading your Chromebook's webcam capabilities. So I'll click on the box where it says Untitled Video and name the project Chrome OS Upgrade Webcam. The next step is to add the media I need for my project. I recorded the audio and video I needed for this project and I want to now import it. To do that, I can click on this plus button and get all these options. I can either drag and drop my media from a folder on my Chromebook, or I can choose another one of these options like importing from cloud storage, or directly record from the Chromebook's camera. I have my media stored on a folder in my Chromebook, so I'll just open up that folder and drag all the media to the ClipChamp window to import. I can also import media from an SD card. One thing to know about ClipChamp is that the media you edit is actually stored locally. Your projects can be synced over the web, but when editing on another computer, it will have to download the media to that computer in order to continue editing. So after dragging my media onto ClipChamp, you can see that it's getting it ready for editing. I can begin editing, but any videos that aren't ready yet won't be visible on the timeline until they are ready. If you look at the top, you can see that you can filter out your media by video only, audio only, or only images. If you want to make your projects available on other computers, you will have to enable backup to cloud. Here you can see a warning letting me know that the media isn't backed up to the cloud. To enable the cloud backup feature, click on this cloud icon here. There's a slash on top of the cloud letting you know that cloud backup is turned off. I then just click on the turn on cloud backup button and everything will then be copied to the cloud. If I look at the details, I can see the status of the files being backed up. I can still continue working on my project, but to work on it at another computer, I will have to wait till all the files get backed up to the cloud. So I have all my media ready for editing. I want to first add my video's intro. So I'll look for the appropriate clip on my media library and drag and drop it to the timeline. Now I want to tell you about two important keyboard shortcuts that you will be constantly using in ClipChamp. These are the shortcuts to zoom in on your timeline and to move the timeline left and right. To zoom in on the timeline, hold down the control key on your Chromebook and then either do the scroll gesture on your trackpad or move the mouse wheel on an external mouse. And to move the timeline left and right, hold down the shift key and do the same scrolling gesture on your trackpad or by moving the mouse wheel. If you drag the mouse cursor on the timeline, it moves this white line called the scrubber. So this clip I dragged into the timeline has a couple of intros I created, but I only want to use one of them. That means I have to resize this clip to the area I want to use. To do that, click on the clip to highlight it. On each end of the clip, there are some thicker bars. If you put the mouse on top of those bars and drag those bars, you can resize the clip. Knowing that, I can now resize the clip to the part I want to use as my intro. 
I can move the scrubber on the clip to help me identify the areas I want by looking at the video preview window. I have the clip sized the way I want it, so let me play it back to confirm. You can hit the spacebar on your keyboard to play back the project from the point of the scrubber. With clips that you have on your timeline, you can freely drag them around by just clicking and dragging with your mouse button. You can move them left or right or to different tracks. One of the cool features of ClipChamp is the ability to add stock audio and video directly from the editor. This clip I'm using for my intro has audio on it, but I do not want to use its audio. I want to find a new song for my intro, and I can use ClipChamp's stock audio library to find one. To view the audio library, I'll click on the music and sound effects icon on the left. And here I'm shown some audio. I can preview the audio by just putting my mouse over an audio clip. I think I'm going to use this clip for the intro music. But I also have the option of searching for a type of song or sound effect by using the search box. I'll search for rock music. And I get search results related to what I typed. So I'll go back to the song I wanted to use. I'll drag it to the timeline to use it in my project. Then I'll test it out by moving the scrubber to the beginning of the project and hitting play. Okay, the new song is playing, but so is the song of my other clip. I need to mute the audio for my intro clip. The way I do that is by clicking on the speaker icon at the beginning of it. Now, there's an X in front of the speaker letting us know that the clip has been muted. I'll play back the project again. Sounds good. Now, I don't want the entire song to play. I want it to play during the intro and fade out when the intro is over. I'll resize my intro to be a little shorter. I also want the song to start fading out after the intro clip finishes playing. But before I set the fading property, I think this audio clip is a bit too loud. To change its volume, click on it. At the top of the screen, some new options appear. Click on the audio option. Then I'll set the volume to a lower level. Okay, so it's time to shorten the song so it plays a little while after the intro. Let me show you how to split a clip into two clips. Click on the clip, move the scrubber to the section you want to cut, then you can either right click on the clip and select split, or you can hit the S key on your keyboard. If you made a mistake in the cut, you can select the undo button here. I ended the split, but I'll create it again. So now I don't need the audio clip that's on the right. I can delete it by clicking on it and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Now I want to set the clip to fade out. We want to select the clip, and at the top, there is a fade button. Click on it to see the fade options. Then I'll set the fade out slider to two seconds. If you have a clip you want to fade in, you can do that too. If I play back the project, the audio will fade out after the intro is done. So now I want to add the clip of me talking to the camera and add some more clips related to what I'm speaking about on different tracks. I also want to add some transitions to the clips for different topics. This is the clip I want, so I'll drag it to the timeline right next to the intro. I want to add a transition between the intro and that clip with me speaking. To do that, click on the filters and transitions icon to the left. You will then get a list of available transitions. If you hover your mouse over one, you can get a preview of it. I want to use the crossfade transition, so I drag it to the timeline. You will notice between my clips there is a plus icon. I can move the transition to that plus icon to add it. Let me test it. And What's it works. Up, everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your USB webcam. You can change the duration of the transition and the type by hovering your mouse over the space between the clips. And when you see the transparent green box appear, 
Click on it and the options appear at the top of the window. Now let's say I want some B-roll related to something I'm talking about. I'm going to move the timeline to the area I want to add the B-roll to. This is not required, but it will just remind you where you need to put a clip at. Then I look for the clip in my library and drag it to the timeline on a new track right above the clip with me in it. Since this new clip is on top of the clip with me speaking, it's what's going to be shown when you play back the project. I'll play the project to test. The new B-roll clip is also playing audio, so I'll mute it like I showed you before. To test this out, I'll be using my Logitech webcam and also this mirrorless webcam. Now I'll resize the clip to the amount of time I want it to use up. Here, I have an area of my video that there is a long pause before I start speaking. I would shorten this by splitting the clip and resizing them until I'm happy with the results. Let me now show you how to add stock video. It's done the same way I added stock audio, except you click on the stock video icon on the left. I want a clip of someone plugging in a USB cable onto a computer, so I'll do a search on that. This one looks good, so I'll drag it onto the timeline to the section I want it on. I'll play back the area to see if the stock video is in the right spot and the right length. Then I'll adjust it accordingly. I'll now continue with this project using the methods I showed you so far. You can also add stock images to your project. Just click on the stock images icon on the left and search for something you want. Then drag it to where you want it on your timeline. I want to find an image that will allow me to circle an area of a clip so the viewer pays attention to it. I can't find something I want, but luckily I have already found something I imported myself into my media library. On the library, I'll click on the images tab Here's the circle I want to use, so I'll drag it to the timeline. Adjust the area I want it in. Then resize it and move it to a position on the screen. To resize a clip, click on it. And with the options that appear at the top, select Transform. Click Crop to Fill. Then click on an image in the video preview. A green box appears around it. I'll move the image until I can see one of the green box's corners, then resize it by dragging one of the circles in the corners. Here's where I want the circle. I want the circle a little brighter. Luckily, Clipchamp offers you a way of adjusting the colors of a clip. Click on the clip, click Adjust Colors at the top, then I'll play around with the sliders until I get something I'm happy with. Alternatively, I can also play around with some filters in the Filters menu. Now I'm done adjusting the circle. I want to copy and paste it to highlight another section of the clip below it. I'll right click on the circle clip and hit copy. Then right click on the timeline and hit paste. I can also use the Ctrl C and Ctrl V keyboard shortcuts. Then I'll move the second circle to the area I want and continue with my edits. I want to let you know that clips on the main track do not have to be side by side. You can split a clip and move them apart if you need some space between them, like I'm doing to this section here. I'm done editing my video using all the tools I showed you. However, I decided I want some background music to play throughout my video. So I'll go to the music and sound effects options and search for another clip to add to the timeline.
What's up everyone? In this video, I'll change its volume so it doesn't overpower my speaker. And make audio fade in so it doesn't sound so abrupt after the intro song plays. And since this song doesn't last the entire video, I'll just copy and paste it and put the copy at the end of the original. I'll resize the copy to stop playing before my outro. And I'm done. What's left to do now is to export my project as a standalone video. Do that by clicking on the export button on the top right. I get the options to either create a video or GIF. I want a video. And I'll choose 1080p as a resolution. Hit continue and the export will begin. And when it's complete, choose a save location on your Chromebook and your video will be ready. One of the best features of ClipChamp is the ability to edit your video projects on multiple computers. You can use this feature to start editing your videos on your Chromebook. Then, if you're away from it, you can get on another computer with a Chrome or Edge browser and continue editing on that new computer. Any changes that you make on that computer will then be synced to your Chromebook. Let me show you how this works. First, on the computer where you originally created the project, enable cloud backups. Then, get on another computer with a Chrome or Edge browser and log into your ClipChamp account. This is the project I was working on earlier, and if I click on it, ClipChamp will start downloading the appropriate media to the new computer. You can see the progress for each media file in the media library. It's best to wait until all media is downloaded before you start editing. So that's a tutorial on some of ClipChamp's features. If you want to try out ClipChamp for yourself, you can download it from the Google Play Store for Chromebook users and the Microsoft Store for PC users. I'll provide links in the description. ClipChamp provides a free tier. However, for this video, ClipChamp has provided a coupon code for one month free access to their Business Platinum tier, which includes unlimited video, photo stock, audio use, and custom branding options. Just enter coupon code clipchamp loose tech source at checkout. So give ClipChamp a try and let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.